Hey everybody, this is Mike from Avidine, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to upgrade the software on your IFDs to 10.3.0.2. Now, as always, this video is supplemental information. Always refer to the latest revision of the service bulletin available through your Avidine dealer or by contacting Avidine Tech Support. The 10.3 software update is considered a minor alteration and can be performed by appropriately certified personnel or repair stations and requires a logbook entry in the aircraft maintenance records. Avidine recommends having an approved Avidine dealer perform the update, but end users can request the software through the knowledge base on avidine.com. Dealers will access the software from the dealer portal. This update is going to take anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour, but it is possible that units loaded with software versions 10.1 to 10.2 may take up to 90 minutes or longer, so please make sure you use an external power source to perform this update. If you try to update your software on battery power or on a trickle charger and the battery dies, the IFD has to come back to Avidine for repair. You can also perform this update outside the aircraft on a bench, but make sure power is applied to both connectors, otherwise it will result in a failed load and you will have to perform the update a second time. If you're following along with the software upgrade service bulletin, I'll be referencing the sections listed there. Now some of your user configuration settings may be reset to factory default, so we highly recommend recording them manually for safekeeping. For software upgrades, we don't recommend saving your settings to the thumb drive because when they're reloaded to an IFD that has just undergone a software update, they won't be accepted by the IFD, so please manually record your maintenance mode configuration settings prior to performing the update. As for user options, downloading these settings and transferring them to uh, the IFD after the 10.3 update may not restore all pre-update settings in some situations. It is best to manually record all settings and verify the settings after the update is performed. So the required materials in section 2.1 says you're going to need an 8 or 16 gig thumb drive formatted to FAT32 loaded with the files listed in section 2.1. Make sure the only files loaded onto the thumb drive are the ones you're going to be loading onto the IFD. Do not load the service bulletin PDF or this video onto your thumb drive. In section 3.2 of the software update service bulletin, there is a caution to only update one system at a time in aircraft with multiple IFDs. Make sure the IFD not currently being upgraded is powered off at all times during the upgrade. The run once file included in the software utilities will disappear from the USB stick after the first update and will need to be reloaded onto the USB stick for the second IFD. Now let's move on to section 4.2 of the software update service bulletin on page 14. First thing we're going to do is make sure that the IFD is powered off. We're going to insert the USB drive that has all of our files including the run once file loaded onto it and we're going to power on the IFD. The IFD will automatically boot into maintenance mode and automatically begin the update process. If the IFD does not boot into maintenance mode or begin the update process automatically, follow steps 3 and 4 in section 4.2. We see here it's booted up into maintenance mode and the update has begun automatically. After some time, the IFD will prompt you to confirm you are running on ground power. If you are on ground power, press proceed. If you are not on ground power, press cancel, connect to external power, and restart the update. The IFD will also prompt to confirm that you have completed the steps outlined in section 3.1, record system settings. If you have recorded all your maintenance mode and user settings, press proceed. If you have not, press cancel, record the settings, and then restart the update. At some point during the update, you may see a prompt to power cycle the IFD. All you have to do here is remove power to the IFD, wait about 10 seconds, and then power on the IFD. Once the conformity check is complete and there are no errors, you should get a conform success message that says your Avidine system is currently running an approved software version. Press proceed, and at this point, we can move on to section 5.1, verifying the software load. Navigate over to the status page and press the line select key until software is displayed. 
we need to verify that there are no red or dashed out checksums. Use the small lower right knob to scroll through the list to verify that all checksums are normal. Also check the top of the screen to find the word conforming in parentheses. If there are any red or dashed out checksums, take note of which ones are not conforming, take a picture of this page, and email us at techsupport at avidine.com. This is also a good time to verify your maintenance mode configuration settings as some of them will change with 10.3. Navigate over to the config tab and cycle through all the pages to verify that they're still there. Make any changes needed, then navigate back to the update tab and press done to reboot into flight mode. You can now remove the USB stick. Once it boots back into flight mode, we can go through the setup pages to verify our user options. This page will look slightly different now, so pay close attention to the submenus and their individual settings. Now that we have properly performed the update and everything checks out, it's important that we fill out the maintenance record on page 20 of the service bulletin and send this to tech support at avidine.com. Make the appropriate entries in the aircraft logbooks and any other requirements in accordance with federal regulations. And that's it. That's how you perform the software update to 10.3. If you have any questions, please reach out to Avidine Tech Support. And as always, fly safe, fly Avidine.